Hey guys, my name is Ismas, I'm a computer top channel on one. So today we're going to be looking at 10 ways to improve your viewport performance by optimizing it in several ways. So the first uh, thing we're going to be looking at is the workbench viewport, which is this viewport here. Uh, it's usually a gray, uh, let me show you how it's, the default is. It's usually a single color like this, uh, but uh, I usually turn on a random lens so that I can tell uh, the different objects very easily. So yeah, one way to improve that viewport is uh, Make sure you don't have any shadows turned on. If you go to viewport shading, overlays, or you see that uh, you have a, few, a bunch of settings here. One thing you don't want to ever have on is shadows because that really slows down your viewport significantly. And you can see I'm trying to turn it on, but uh, it took a few seconds to be activated because that's how slow it is. And uh, I think it's still turning on. Uh, so make sure you don't have that on. I won't even attempt to move around because it's that's how bad it can get. I'm just going to and pull, remove that and it doesn't really add much to to your viewport shading so there's no really good reason to have it on so if your scene is too is still too slow you can go back to the viewport and turn on cavity if you have it on uh, it doesn't add too much to the computation or to it doesn't reduce too much on the viewport performance but uh, if you're still struggling with your scene you can reduce remove that but those are just simple stuff uh, if you have modifiers especially subdivision modifiers and uh, maybe a bevel modifier those can really be heavy on your computer on your viewport and uh, that's not just the viewport shading uh, but also in look dev and uh, in your fine in your render uh, viewport so to Make sure that uh, your viewport is not struggling and uh, optimize your viewport performance. You can turn on, you can go to render settings and uh, you see an option called simplify. If you check that, you can reduce the maximum subdivision. That means that uh, if you have, let me see if I can open up a blender file here. That means if you have any objects with uh, subdivisions, say let's have a Suzanne head, a Suzanne head here. I'll turn on wireframe so that uh, and uh, maybe. Yeah, so you can see how many subdivisions we have. If I go to render settings and uh, simplify, turn on simplify, I can reduce the maximum number of subdivisions and uh, you can see uh, that will remove all the subdivisions uh, in render in the viewport. And uh, if I want to also remove that, the subdivision in render time, I can also reduce that. But I recommend just remove them in, this, in the viewport so that uh, uh, they are known in the viewport. Uh, making your viewport lighter and uh, but when you render it will get the all the subdivisions that you added uh, to it uh, so another thing uh, if you want to improve your viewport performance say you have a lot of particles in your scene let me do this quickly here turn on random colors say you have a particle system a hair system uh, let's add uh, in render choose this object this cube as our render object so let's say we, we have these particles. Uh, let me scale them down a bit. And uh, we have uh, children. So your viewport can get really slow, especially if these were trees with geometry, with a lot of geometry, or any objects with a lot of geometry. Your viewport can get really, really slow uh, if you have that many particles. Uh, again, if you go to simplify, there is an option for reducing the number of maximum actual particles in your scene. and. Uh, if you slide this down, it will reduce the number of uh, child particles in your scene that are being displayed, releasing some of the memory that was being used up and uh, hence improving your viewport uh, performance. Uh, but uh, uh, one other thing, uh, other tip I would recommend when working with particles, just make sure you don't have a lot of number, a lot of particles. Just use, I usually try using fewer particles, fewer original particles, but bump up uh, the child uh, particles I can see when you increase the particle count, uh, the uh, children particles here, uh, they just get clustered around the parent particle, which is the original particles here uh, in the number setup here. Uh, if you want to spread them out, you just have to go to the radius here and uh, just increase that uh, like that and uh, that should. Uh, now if we increase the number of particles, we can easily uh, do have a uh, quite a big number of particles and uh, now we can <clears throat> just go back here uh, to the viewport uh, to the simplify and uh, reduce the particle count and uh, now we with uh, removing these child particles we will see the original particles and if you want to bring them back uh, we can do that uh, but I usually like to remove them a bit in the render viewport you will still see uh, the maximum number of particles until 
unless if you have reduced that as well for the render option here let me get a tree that i could use a quick plug this is my asset library uh it's an add-on that works like the asset browser and just lets me access uh stuff much easier and um, so and i take it it doesn't take up uh, that much space like the asset browser so if you want to get it and support the channel our uh, links are in the description okay so let's say we have a tree like this and we want to use it as our particle system in the particle system maybe we are creating a forest uh you could uh yes I'm just going to replace uh, the cube with this tree. Let me just uh, rotate it maybe on the x-axis. Apply rotation. Uh, I guess I need to rotate it 180 degrees. Apply rotation so that everything is standing. Okay, so let's say this is our tree. At some point, even if you don't have any child, children particles, uh, the default will slow down because the, par the original instance had a lot of particles especially if you're dealing with trees uh, one way if you don't want to reduce the resolution or yeah the resolution of the number of particles in your tree what you can do is uh, use proxies a uh, proxies are basically an estimation of what you have of the original instance and uh, let me just show you so if you have this is our instance I can go in the display uh, options or object properties under viewport display i can change from display as texted to bounds uh, bound bounds and uh, that will just give us a cube like this but uh, in the viewport if we render this in cycles do still render these as trees as you can see let me just zoom in a bit as you can see there let me turn on uh sky texture here so you can see in the in the in cycles, it will still render these as trees, but uh, in EV, unfortunately, it doesn't support. It will just render them as cubes uh, like that. Oh, it won't even show them because uh, it doesn't uh, recognize them. So in EV, there isn't a good way to optimize that. You just have to keep them as textured uh, for them to be rendered. Yeah, so another thing, uh, if you go back to our original uh, render here, uh, Attack on Titan, uh, you notice that... Uh, when I was working, if you were here, when we are dealing with the stream, uh, when, I, when I'm placing particle systems like this, for example, this, uh, this image, we, can, we have a cluster of uh, trees here, trees here, like uh, small forests uh, there, there, there. What I see people doing is uh, if they want to have a particle system or uh, trees on this mesh, they usually go in and subdivide, I, I guess, I subdivided this but it wasn't for for that i was just using that subdivision for displacing uh, the texture uh, the plane what people usually do is subdivide this mesh uh, a lot so that uh, they can use they can go in and uh, create vertex groups uh, where they and uh, determine where the trees are going to be uh, that's really wasteful because you are adding unnecessary resolution to the mesh so what i usually do instead of using uh, instead, instead of using weight paint or vertex group, vertex groups that require a lot of subdivisions or a lot of polygons, I just have a plane. Let me show you here, like this. Let me bring back uh, viewport. This, yeah, I, I get a plane like this with a uh, very few subdivisions, and uh, instance add the particle system to that, like you see there. And uh, instead of so, if you're using weight paint and you wanted uh or if you wanted to use vertex group you would have to wait paint this area let me first clear uh, this you would have to wait paint this area but you, you see we don't have enough polygons to actually paint uh precisely where we want the particle system so you would have to subdivide this mesh quite a lot to get enough resolution to be able to paint over it uh, in, in a more precise way. Uh, so instead of use, doing that, I just have a plane like this and I uh, give it all the particles I want and uh, now I can easily duplicate it and place it anywhere I want and uh, I can say I want maybe a single tree here. All I have to do, I can just drag this there and I will have a few trees there and uh, maybe if I want a single tree, maybe I can just duplicate a mesh let me scale it down, yeah, like that. And uh, if you want uh, 
another trick I, another trick you could do let's uh, go to the particle system i will just make this an independent particle system and uh, you can go to the source and change uh, the distribution uh, to uh, uh, the distribution in the particle faces uh, set it to one per face if you want uh, to be very uh, precise say you want one tree maybe somewhere you can just set one particle per, per face and uh, that means that I can just have trees lining up like this and uh, that will guarantee that I have at least one particle per tree uh, but uh, I usually just like to set it to zero uh, that means that I just blender will just determine uh, the number of trees in a particular on a particular uh, surface uh, regardless of uh, uh, the size or area so it just randomly place uh, the the trees uh, like like that if, if you look at this this image you see that uh, they don't have a forest everywhere they just have clusters like this uh, this this is a uh, I've also seen this in landscapes you don't see unless if you're creating a forest you don't see uh, trees covering the entire landscape. You just see clusters here, here, here. You can see um, even this you have here, some here, some here. Look at this, some here, some here. So the you, you will never see a landscape completely covered in trees like what I usually see people doing unless if you're creating a, a, a forest. Uh, so look at this here. You just see clusters here clusters here clusters here even where you have a thick forest you don't it's not covering the entire uh, landscape completely you still have places with uh, without uh, trees so that's a good thing because uh, then we, we we can skip out on some places uh, reducing uh, the number of particles we need uh, for our scene which will also be uh, very kind to our viewport uh, if you're playing back uh, if you're playing back animation and uh, you, your viewport is a bit slow you can try using fl frame dropping uh, under timeline under your timeline you can go under uh, playback uh, sync sync uh, there is an option to frame drop and this will basically just tell blender to skip any frames uh, that are too slow so if blender is playing back and it uh, gets to a frame that is taking too much uh, too much time to compute uh, slowing down the PC it will just keep it or drop it and go to the next frame giving the impression that uh, uh, Blender is continuously playing through the scene smoothly and uh, that will also help out on, on your viewport another thing is uh, I have a list here uh, yeah if you're working with uh, if you're working with instances and say you want a line of uh, instances like this uh, avoid using arrays especially if you're going to use a lot of uh, instances with and those instances have a lot of particles because uh, for some reason the array modifier duplicates the geometry instead of using uh, instances it just duplicates the data of the original object it doesn't uh, reference it uh, which slows down the, the the PC so yeah statistics you can see every time I duplicate uh, this uh, we get more triangles so it's using the array adds more triangles in your scene which will have which will in turn increase the number of polygons that need to be rendered in your viewport in, instead of using this you can try using geometry nodes uh, which is a very simple to set up i uh, just get a plane uh, something like this and uh, uh, this is just going to help us hold the data uh, but uh, then we can go to geometry nodes and uh, create a new object uh, you can set create a mesh line just such mesh mesh line like this and uh, use that it just gives you a line like that <clears throat> then what you can do is create an object info or just drag the object you want to to, to instance so for example the cube just drag it into your scene and then do instance on points so just search for on points instance on points and uh, just use the object the object as the instance like that and now if you scale this down you can basically you, you basically created an array uh, that is lighter than the blender array so if i you can see now for this to increase the particles you just increase the count here and you see i can increase the number of objects and that the number of triangles will not increase uh, 
which is not the case for an array. So if I set up an array and uh, increase here, you can see that uh, the number of triangles here is increasing. Yet if we do the same thing using the uh, the geometry nodes, it doesn't increase, uh, hence saving us on the polygon count. And uh, if you want to change the direction of this, I just have to change the uh, select the proper axis uh, for that, like that. Uh, if you don't know how to set up geometry nodes uh, for something like this, I have an instance. I have this set up in a in an add-on uh, that's basically a geometry nodes setup. Uh, this is quick generators. It comes with a lot of generators uh, like the one I'm showing you. I've shown you here. Uh, it comes with a, a billboard generator that creates this billboard uh, traffic lights and then these uh, uh, utility poles and then that uh, instant uh, that uh, creates an array and also a particle system. I'm going to leave a link to this add-on uh, so if you want to use it also helps out support the channel. So yeah, one final tip if, uh, is uh, if you go to edit uh, preferences uh, viewport you will see that uh, you also have a texture slot here uh, that lets you limit the size of the textures. Uh, you can limit it to 128. That means every texture in your viewport is going to be scaled down to 128 just in the old viewport, but uh, when it comes to render time, it will render the full resolution. This also will help out with the uh, viewport. Uh, yes, so thank you for watching. I'll see you in the, next view in the next video. If you want to get any of the project files that I work with or this, that I make and also get my add-ons, you can find them on my Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash channel one top channel one on one. I'll be leaving a link in the description for anyone who might be interested in uh, that. You can also check out my gum road. If you're new here, I'll also recommend uh, you subscribe uh, that way you don't miss out on any of the videos uh, that we produce here. And uh, also we do live streams uh, like uh, this scene here. We made it live on YouTube. So if you are interested in that, make sure to subscribe, leave a notification, uh, set up your notifications so that you can get notified when we are live. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.